What up? I'm Josh Paulison, and I'm going to try vlogging a little bit of programming. I enjoy talking about this, and I figure that it could be interesting for other people. So one of the things that I was doing today with Showpony was working on allowing you to have video backgrounds. And the way that backgrounds work in Showpony and characters is that they are all the same type. If we go into our VN, let's see if I've got it open here. I thought that I did. There is a script for the visual novels. And inside of that script, there are different objects. Here we go for different types of content for text boxes, for characters, and actually backgrounds and characters are the same. You have an M character, and if we go down here, what you'll see now is that it's grabbing the extension. This is some code that I got on Stack Overflow. I probably need to reference where I got that from. Don't remember. And um, if it's an MP4 or a WebM file, then it will end up registering it as a video and it will end up playing it on loop. So if I go over here, I can add in a video for the background. So the background here is hallway and these art assets are by Puppet Bomb by the way. I end up using this a lot for local private testing just because I um, have this sample of breakdown on the website. I end up messing with it. So if I go hallway I can end up going into images and I believe it's rain.mp4. I believe that I saw that file there. Now if I refresh and I go past there and we should see all right, I need to open up the console and turn off the cache. We'll see a video background. There we go, and if I hit play, it will start to play. I can pause it again. And some this was actually very easy to implement. And the idea is that people could use this for kind of having a more artistic feel with some different things. Obviously, this background doesn't make much sense in this context, but I found that, um, that it's very easy now with just the different technologies and with the way that things are set up in order to add video instead of images. Because if you go into the um, into the HTML of the JavaScript, there are things that can trip you up when you're starting off. A few tricks that once you understand how they work, it will you'll be able to work around them and save yourself a lot of trouble. So one of the things that can be a problem, and I didn't expect this to be a problem starting off, is that you will have things try to cast it with Chrome. So if you were on a phone, because there's a video background playing, you might see a little icon in the top left that says cast to your Chromecast. And that's super annoying because this is just a video background. I don't want it to cast. I actually had this problem with um, with the video demo on Showpony and also with the audio demo, which I don't have up right now, because it would try to cast it to the screen, but then it would lose the whole UI and it really didn't work the way that, it, it just didn't work. <laughs> So down here, you'll see that there's some interesting attributes. So for example, one of them is disable remote playback. And if I go into here, um, why am I in this wrong file again? If I go over to here, you'll see disable remo remote playback equals true. And that will disable it for Chromecast. It should also display it, disable it for Apple TVs and the like. I have preload equals true, loop equals true. And um, basically, can play, you have for loading it. So there's some different things that when you're starting out with HTML video can kind of trip you up. For example, you don't wanna check if it's loaded. With images you go, okay, well if the image is loaded, here this is, if it's an image, this is if it is a video. With an image you'll check if it's loaded and then hey, it succeeded in loading. But with a video, different browsers handle loading videos different ways. And so can play is the safest way to see if it's actually loaded and to pass a loading success event. Because if you try to have it load, then it'll have to have loaded the whole video. And some browsers, if, if you have preload true, you might think that all browsers handle it the same way, whether that's they load, preload a segment or they preload the whole thing. Actually, different browsers will handle it differently. And I'd be curious, I'm not sure if this is the case. It wouldn't surprise me too much if there are places where Users can customize those settings as well. So you can't count on preload and then just have this be load. You really have to have on play. There is also, I believe it is called data loaded. And I have um, another module open up for that in video. I end up having to check when the video's data is loaded. Let's see, loaded data. And this just means that it kind of has identified that it is a video and that it's got and it doesn't it doesn't have enough info to play there's actually a can play videos have a ridiculous number of events but this allows you to the, the reason why I have this at all is because safari will glitch up if you um if you try to change the time of a video and then loaded data runs loaded data for some reason when this event runs it will overwrite a bunch of stuff um I actually put a stack overflow answer on the video stuff so I guess I'm just ranting right now. 
the reason why I'm talking about this at all is because it's pretty interesting some of the tricks and tips that you get into with video. This one was um, how to read an MP4 file with PHP. Here's one. So, so the way that video and audio both work in HTML is that they run load start, duration change, loaded metadata, loaded data, and this is the one that we have over here. Progress, can play, can play through. It's It gets kind of nuts. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's interesting to me that they have all these events, and I, it, it's kind of cool, but also stuff starts to break. So the reason why I have to check loaded data is because, for whatever reason, if I set current time in here, if I set the video's time, current time is just, uh, it, it's a variable that you can set to a video, and it will um, update the time that the video is at. Um, you have to update it in loaded data for it to work correctly on Safari. And also, sometimes I, I was having some issues with audio. I'm not sure if Chrome just changed the way that that worked. But, um, but audio also can have some bugs with it. So what I'm kind of ranting about overall is how videos will work inside of here, is inside of a browser. It seems like it should be simple. Like with the new HTML elements and new, it's years old now. <laughs> but you've got to take into account not just that you have a video element but you also have to take into account remote playback disabling that you have to take into account how preloading works and the right events to listen for and also something else that's interesting I, I think that it works in every browser now but object fit cover is very handy with videos because with images you might do a background image and you might be able to have it cover like using background size if you're familiar with that CSS style probably have it in here I'm sure I do background background size let's see oh but the uh, here we go background size contain there's also background size cover there's different settings for that with a video, it's it's not a background image. You can't have the video as a background image. So you have to use this object fit cover CSS style. Basically, you set the size to fill up the space, but then object fit cover will keep it from actually stretching. It's going to help you have it keep its aspect ratio and just kind of zoom in or out. So if I drag this down, you'll see that the video in the back, um, it ends up staying to where it fills the screen. Like you don't get it shrinking and then black bars on either side. But, um, yeah. So I guess there's some information you maybe never knew that you needed to know about <laughs> the HTML5 video element. So, fortunately, once you get used to the craziness, it's, it, it actually is crazy. I can't say that it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but it starts to get a better flow. And the reason why I'm interested in videos and looking at how it works in HTML is because of this multimedia web engine I've been working on, Showpony, and trying to make this work correctly. I've got it muted. That's why you're not hearing any audio. So there's a rant. I might do more of these just because I love talking about programming and teaching people and sharing what I know. So let me know if this made sense. If not, that's okay. Have a good one. And maybe I'll see you in another video.